Crown. The Southeast Seminoles host the Bayshore Bruins. Tonight's game is sponsored by 89th Street Pizza. All you can eat for just $3.99. Conley Buick. The great Florida road belongs to Buick. Along with Charlie Wells, we've got a county rivalry going on here tonight, a district matchup. As you see, Paul Meckley, who's on the verge of a big record. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But uh, Southeast Seminoles, of course, undefeated, taking on the Bayshore Bruins. And Southeast uh, can really put quite a feather in their cap tonight, Charlie. It's ironic. Last week, we were over at Manatee, and they beat Riverview for a state all-time record for Joe Canan and the Manatee Hurricanes. Of course, Joe, the coach over there, by winning their 11th district title in a row, the Southeast can set their own state record tonight by winning their 39th straight district game. And uh, this, of course, would go a long way if they beat Bayshore tonight in uh, winning their 10th consecutive district title in a row right on Manatee's heels. So the Southeast Seminoles with a lot to play for tonight, taking on the Bayshore Bruins, who uh, frankly have looked, we haven't seen them in several weeks now, Charlie. And when we saw them earlier in the year, they had a lot of work they needed to do. They were getting beaten badly, but since we've seen them, they've uh, won some football games. So Bayshore, although they haven't beaten Southeast since 1980, uh, looking to uh, get something going here tonight, or at least a good, as you can say, or see our standings there, Southeast and Bayshore tied for that uh, district lead. Of course, this game will go a long way in saying who wins it. But something very interesting, if Bayshore can win next week against Port Charlotte, they have a great chance they would go uh, to the playoffs as that runner-up and would have to play on the road. So after starting off as poorly as they did, we'll listen to our... You hear Southeast has deferred, so Bayshore will receive. But the Bruins with an excellent opportunity here, Charlie. They're 2-0 and in the district, 3-4 and overall. And the important thing is a win over Port Charlotte next week, and these Bayshore Bruins would be making it. to see what happens. If they can hang in until the first half, they got a chance of an upset. That's what they're counting on. And, of course, you take a look at the rivalry. Southeast has won and won big over Bayshore as a rule since 1983. And we should mention, too, that was the first year of uh, those district titles uh, in And there's our kickoff. Daniel Boyd drills it deep. And here come the Bruins across the 15. That's Matt Holt, and he didn't go very far. Up to about the 18 with just a, a textbook tackle down there. And making the stop, number 41, that's Shanto Garvin. And uh, he met him straight up, and the Bruins will take another look at it here, Charlie. Well, you see this uh, just a uh, really absolutely nothing on this play. He tries to bring the ball back and gets hit and just literally picked up and thrown to the ground. So Southeast comes out fired up on defense like they always do. No change there. Nothing new. So we're all set. Southeast Seminoles have won 38 straight district games. That goes all the way back to 1984. The last time they were beaten was by Venice back in 1984, and they haven't lost a district game since. Ten straight titles. And uh, trying to get going there. Southeast almost stealing the handoff as Loring gets the call. And I think that was big uh, Reggie Williams back there. Number 90, who almost stole the snap, maybe back to the line of scrimmage for Loring. We'll call it second down 10. Bayshore will have to uh, do something innovative here to be able to move this ball. I don't think you could just come out and play straight up with this Southeast defense. It's a tough defense. Uh, big number 90, Reggie Williams, uh, he'll show you something all night long. And along with the rest of that bunch from Southeast, they play rough, tugged ball, and they don't give a lot. And Randy Thomas is your quarterback, number three. He's going to keep it. And Thomas, once again, he's lucky now to get back to the line of scrimmage. And who else but Reggie Williams in there. He's quick, he's big, and he's the guy who's going to be playing a lot of football in years to come, Charlie. Reggie Williams, number 90. Everybody likes Reggie Williams, all the coaches, and, us, and uh, he's become a real favorite with the Southeast fans and, and, and myself included in that because we really see how good he plays defense. He pursues right there, never gives up. And, uh, and stays right in there until the, until the tackle's made. You can see he's quick. He runs uh, at least uh, for 40 or 50 yards. He runs as fast as the backs do. And he got help from his pal. Their senior linebacker, Rich Robick, will be calling his name a lot too, number 33 in on that play. Third down and 10. No gain on the first two plays for the Bruins. Thomas is going to try it again. A nice little inside handoff to Loring. And he does get about seven yards. However, nice looking little play, but he's going to be short of the first down. And it'll bring up fourth down. So the Bruins face now with fourth and three, and Loring is the punter, so he'll stay in and head back. And this gives Southeast a, a great opportunity at some field position. And a guy running it back, we've seen him run a couple back in some big games when Southeast beat Manatee and Riverview. Back there, Peter Warwick ran a couple back in each of those games. So Loring will give it a crack. And that's partially blocked, it appears. 
and goes floating out there. And that's going to end up a, about a 13-yard punt. So uh, ball and his foot at the same time. So by touching that ball, uh, he, he avoids the uh, uh, running into the kicker call. I think that might have been Timmons getting back there. It was hard to see. He stretched out. I thought I saw number 10 back. There. So the field position gets even uh, that much better down to the 33 for Southeastern. you got to make the Seminoles go farther than that if you're going to hang in there. So the Bruins unable to get a first down in their first possession. Now that powerful Southeast offense, John Reeves is your quarterback. And he hands it off inside to big Andrew Jackson, who pulls ahead. He gets inside the 30 for a gain of about four on the play. And we'll see plenty. Andrew Jackson tonight, great inside runner. Well, Andrew Jackson, you see him take the ball here and uh, take the first handoff, the first play from scrimmage in tonight's uh, offensive scheme for Southeast. Now, keep in mind, he has had the flu this week, so we don't know if he's going to be at full strength or not. He, he's been a little bit sick, and uh, that may tell on him as the game goes on. Second down six. Reeves is going to throw for the first time. That little hitch pass out there to his favorite receiver, Warwick, and defense nicely out there by the Bruins. Pass was complete, but only a yard or two on the play. Todd Kuhn out there to bring him down. Brings up third down five now for the Seminole. And we, and we take a look there at, at Reeves and Taggart on top. Taggart, of course, with Manatee at 823. That's coming into tonight's games. Reeves with 710, some throw over Palmetto, and Thomas, the young sophomore, will see him throw the ball tonight, too. And there goes Andrew Jackson, and he's untouched, 28 yards for the touchdown. Now, so that quickly, Southeast on top, Jackson just busted that thing loose, and that's all she wrote. 6 nothing Southeast. Take another look. Nothing fancy about this play. Andrew Jackson just takes it. He's a former offensive player of the week here on Paragon Cable. He runs it right straight up. In for his second touchdown of the year, rushing. Nice run by Andrew Jackson. Gets a gigantic hole by that offensive line for Southeast. So a 28-yard touchdown run. We see Daniel Boyd on to attempt the extra point. This game is not even four minutes old. Boyd uh, puts it up there and through, so seven to nothing. Just that quickly. And uh, it's kind of unfortunate for Bayshore, really, at this point of the season that they have to come up against them because they do have a chance of at least coming in second in this district and being able to advance to the playoffs. But it's a little demoralizing to play a team of southeast caliber after what they've been through this year. And Boyd drills it. And bringing it out over the 25. Nice return out to the 32-yard line by Brian Wood, a defensive back, only 130 pounds. And he just took it straight uh, straight back up the field. Nice looking return. He took that right at about the goal line. And the Bruins will start from their own 32. Brian Wood does a fine piece of running right here. Gets his hand on the ball right about right at the goal line. And uh, you see him grab him by the shirt, but that's not good enough. You have to tackle him. And uh, finally, he's brought, to, uh, he's brought to the ground. But a nice return by Brian Wood. Jermaine Belvin on the stop. And Bayshore with decent field position. We'll call it their own 31, first and 10. Vital for them right now, Charlie, to get some first downs and, and keep that ball away from that Southeast offense. Not an easy uh, goal against this Southeast defense. And there's Thomas, and he hangs on to it and gets a couple of yards. He's taken over that starting job. He's only a sophomore. And at uh, Bayshore, with those three straight wins, Charlie, I'll tell you what they're doing with some young people, too, as we take another look. Thomas, Thomas getting well, trouble. Jim Thomas does what he does best right there. He takes that ball and just follows up behind the tackles. He uh, Last week, uh, he threw, uh, uh, threw 15 of 29 for 231 yards, and that come from behind victory over right. Charlotte. He also can run the ball. He's, uh, he's one of their leading rushers. And uh, their uh, chief running back is Octavius Calhoun. He's a freshman. We'll see him in a little bit. But right now, we see Loring, who breaks a tackle right at the line of scrimmage and lugs it out to about the 38. So a gain of about five for Loring. And here's the critical play for Bayshore now. Third down and a, and a long three as we take another look at Loring. Up well, Loring there. runs uh, just to the back to the right side, and uh, he's got this year along, he has 373 yards. He's got a 4.8 average. He scored a touchdown as well. Uh, Loring is, it does a good job carrying the ball, but you're right. Third and three, this is a critical play for them. They need to get a first down if they want to stay in this ball game. I'd say it's already a critical stage right now for them. We're midway through the first quarter, southeast on top. And there's that, oh, look out at that shovel pass. is intercepted by Reggie Williams. He's pointing at Thomas and does get into the end zone. So Williams 
with an interception. That was technically a shovel pass. It was going forward. So Williams, and that's not how you stay close to Southeast. I'll tell you that, Charlie. We'll well, exactly right. You see uh, Thomas come back. You see him trying to make the little shuttle pass. Reggie Williams just comes out of nowhere, peels it off of somebody's shoulder, and the big tackle runs it in for a touchdown. I think that's the first of his career. So 33-yard interception. And Thomas made the stop, but not until he got into the end zone. So that quickly, at 6-10 now, 13 to nothing. Reggie Williams picking off the shovel pass. And, we look, <laughs> and I'm going to take a guess here, Charlie, as, we, as Boyd makes the extra point. I hate to try to read people's minds, but I'll bet you Paul Meckley was telling him to uh, go easy on that taunting stuff and wait till you get in the end zone for that celebration. Knowing Paul, I'm going to make a stab that that's what he was talking to Mr. Williams about. Paul nice Meckley. play, but uh, a little showboating there the last 10, 15 years. Uh, excuse me, Jim. Paul Meckley's a class guy, and uh, that's the way he likes to play football. And you see watch Reggie, he takes it, see it roll around there, and then Reggie reaches up and grabs it with those big paws of his, and then he takes it on in. I watch him, he starts taunting uh, uh, the quarterback, Thomas, right there, and that's exactly what Paul Meckley's on to him. He said, hey, big man, show a little class. Now you did a good job, got the interception, you got to show a little class. So the first uh, attempt to the air for Thomas is a tragic one. Just trying a little shovel pass, a decent call on third and three, unless you got Reggie Williams picking it off and going the other way. So that quickly, Southeast has only run like four offensive plays, but they're already on top. 14 to nothing, 6-10 to go in our first quarter, and Daniel Boyd already with his third kickoff of the game. So the Bruins have built themselves a hole, as so many teams have when they come here to Southeast High School to take on the Seminoles. And that's going to come out to the 20-yard line. Boyd drilled that one. Got a nice, strong leg, so the Bruins will have to try it from the 20. 6-10 to go in the first quarter and already down 14 to nothing. And uh, that's a tough way to make that quick trip across town. Come in here and start to get 14 zip on it. And we'll take a look at those district champions uh, all, all the way back there. 5, 86, 87, all the way through looking for number 10 here this season. And their 39th straight district win since 1985 is when that streak started. Whatever district uh, Southeast has been in, they've changed two or three times, but they always beat everybody who's there undefeated throughout district play. And straight ahead, they're staying with Jason Loring, who busts it. Nice looking run. And Jason Loring, you need that kind of play, Charlie, when you've just been sat 14 to nothing, I tell you. It's a nice run. That is really a big play by Jason Loring right there because uh, they're kind of demoralized after that pick that goes in for a touchdown. Uh, by uh, Reggie Williams, and so Loring just takes the ball. Watch this. Comes right over the right, right over the left side, and cuts back, cuts back to the near side of the field. Well, we missed him there, but that's a nice run. See, Loring just keeps on. He's a powerful guy. Uh, carries the ball real well, and almost broke that one for a touchdown. First and ten. That's Bayshore's first, and this time Loring is lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Trip up there initially, Antonio Shepard on the play. Hines also in there. No gain on the play, second down 10. Well, Jason Loring has carried the ball 77 times for uh, Bayshore this year, and uh, we told you about the 373 yards that he's gained, and really that doesn't tell the story because I don't think that Jason Loring and the rest of that Bayshore offense, they didn't start gelling until uh, about that fifth game, so you really can't tell. You almost have to write off their first four ball games. Second down 10. Remember, they lost their first four. They won three in a row, two district games. And uh, that's Robick wrapping up Loring. They're sticking with uh, the inside man. Robick makes a stop, but Loring gets three before he does. And now that tough third down and seven is what the Bruins are facing again. And Thomas, after that first trip to the air, we take a look at Loring. Loring just comes back uh, between the center and, and uh, the guard and uh, just uh, carries it right straight up, just grinding it out. And uh, this is, this is you know, when they have to throw the ball, this is where they can get hurt. And when you got to throw against Southeast, I mean, you can really get the more line. So, Thomas, remember, he threw the ball 28 times last week. Unheard of over at Bayshore High School, but putting that ball in the air. And here comes Thomas, and he's going to try and turn it around. But Jeremy Richardson had other ideas, and he swamped him back there. Thomas getting up kind of slowly as he's dropped back at the 35, and that would be real critical. Probably just lost the wind. I hope that's all that happened to Thomas because he looked like he landed right on that ball. And we'll take another look at it. Well, Jerry, Jeremy Richardson just bust right in here, and Thomas has no place to turn. Uh, I, I guess it was supposed to be a keeper hour. I don't know. Maybe he was supposed to pitch that ball out and, and kind of lost 
contact with the back, but Jerry Rich Richardson is all over him and uh, and injures Thomas in the play. And that one's blocked again. Another partially blocked ball that's going to end up right at the 47. So a net 12 punt. And I'll tell you what, it's and Southeast got rested up in those two weeks as well as they played to go 7-0. and oh, uh, They look even better after the break. Well, keep in mind that, that Brian Wood, you know, the play before, uh, the series before, Brian Wood gets them and Southeast comes out the huddle real fast and almost catches Bayshore's defense napping here. And there comes McMillan, the first time we've seen him carry the ball, and it won't be the last. He's going to go 47 yards for a touchdown, 20 to nothing already, and Southeast... Oh, wait a second, we've got a flag down, so McMillan's heroics might be coming back here. Nice looking run, we've seen McMillan do that all season long. Clipping on that play. And that's coming back. So Bayshore gets their first big break and it'll take that six right back off the board. Let's take a look at a nice run anyway. Well, Darrell McMillan does a good job running this ball and uh, part of the problem right here is you see Darrell McMillan, he's just a, 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 just a graceful runner carrying it all the way in for the touchdown and it's called back because of clipping. But part of the problem there uh, Southeast broke that offensive huddle very, very fast, and they came up to the line of scrimmage. They they caught Bayshore napping. They were not ready for the snap, and that's the reason that uh, he was able to take it all in because Bayshore were kind of back on their heels there. But uh, fortunately for them, they get a break with a clipping penalty that brings it all back, makes it first and 20. So McMillan's first carry of the night will not go down as a 47-yard touchdown run. It'll be a clipping penalty. It's coming back, and they'll try McMillan again. This time, the results are very different. Maybe losing a yard on the play. Demetrius Perelman got right up there, number 82, to hit him first. He had help down there from Ronnie Walker. And uh, loss of a yard on the play for McMillan. We'll take another look. Well, this time McMillan is just bunched up right in the middle. No place to go. The blocking just fell apart off the southeast offensive line. And, and uh, Bayshore just crashes in with everybody. Their linebackers are piling in there. And uh, they stop him, stop McMillan for a one-yard loss. So bring up second down. And Reeves is going for all of it. He's got a man deep and just over the outstretched hands. I think Warwick let up on that a little bit. Not bad coverage back there by the Bruins. Chad Chiravella going step for step, but Warwick uh, just a step short on this one. Well, you see Peter Warwick as he tries to run underneath this ball now. He's uh, usually he'll be right there and he, he'll be in position to make that catch, but he has an injured ankle. And that's going to hamper him all night. He's not going to be as quick tonight as we've seen him in the past. Usually on most plays, he would have been out there for the catch. So now it's third down and long for Southeast. Remember, McMillan went 47 yards for a touchdown, but it came back on a clip. Reeves now working out of the shotgun. And he talks it once, twice, and now he's not going to get rid of it. He's going to be tackled. He's not going down easily, but he's going to lose some yardage on the play. And that's... Perriman getting up, who was in there on the sack, along with Antoine Snyder. He's a big one. So the Bruins, a little bit of a moral victory as we take a look, uh, finally stop Southeast. Well, Perriman just stays with him, and then finally he gets some help from some of the other defenders. Uh, uh, Snyder comes up, jumps in, then you see everybody get in on the act. But, uh, you know, Reeves almost got that off. That shows you how strong John Reeves is. He almost threw that pass with Perriman hanging all over him. And Reeves frustrated. He had a lot of time, but nobody broke open. He hung in there. And finally, the pass protection, as it has to, after four, five, six seconds, breaks down, and he's sacked for a loss of three. So fourth down and a bunch, and that was almost blocked as Boyd uh, kicks out a line drive there. Down to the 20 and breaking a tackle. Coming back is Brian Wood. Nice return. So a decent return by Wood. 36-yard 30, punt, and we've got a flag. We better check that out first. So at least the Bruins. Avoid that third touchdown and get the ball back. And it looks like a penalty against the Bruins on the return, so that'll hurt their feet. Started when Bayshore had good field position because of Brian Wood. And look who made the tackle on special teams, Reggie Williams, once again. He's already got a touchdown tonight on the interception. And straight ahead running, I believe that's Calhoun. Let's take a look. It is. That's his first. To check that out. That's 27. That's Craig Jones. So Jones with maybe a yard be second down nine. And don't forget about our post-game show. Charlie Wells will have a guest for you, a couple of them, offense, defensive players, talk to some coaches. 
All brought to you by DeSears. And we thank them, and as we do the rest of our sponsors, here on Paragon Cable. Jones gets a yard. And the Bruins making it tough. Second down nine from their own 21. And that's fumble. Loring got popped right away. And Reggie Williams has recovered. He's already picked up two turnovers. <laughs> so, with the recovery fumble. And procedure, of course, will be declined. And they will take over at the Bayshore 22. Well, this ball just pops loose from Loring. And, of course, Reggie Williams is there. And he's at the right place at the right time tonight. That's his second recovery. You recall the interception. And now the fumble recovery for Big Reggie Williams. And we'll call it the 23, so Southeast with great field position. A couple of turnovers, turnovers have hurt Bayshore badly. And now we got a bunch of people jumping, and we'll see which way the five yards goes. 22 seconds remain in our first quarter. Red ball. Ball start on the offense. Procedure against Southeast, so that'll become first and 15. Bruins hurting themselves with that fumble. And of course, the interception. Williams with both turnovers ran one back for a touchdown and has put Southeast in great position here at the 28. Reeves, quick drop back, delivers. Nice looking pass play on that slant inside to Warwick. And he's got himself a first down, it looks like. Awfully close down to about the 13. Peter Warwick runs this slant pattern so beautifully he just cuts right in there and John Reeves who has a nice strong arm throws him hits him right in the numbers Peter Warwick he's a he's excited us a couple of times with punt returns this year he's a nice receiver as well and that'll be the ML and we got back just in time to see Dyer will go 13 yards for the score so that one that he had called back earlier he can forget that now he gets his touchdown you've got a bunch of those this year and McMillan goes 13 yards for the score on the first play of the second quarter. 20 to nothing. And we wait for our extra point attempt with Boyd. And 86. Six weak or strong, I think. And boy, he drilled that one. And it's good, 21 to nothing now, Southeast. And Bayshore going uphill. McMillan with a 13-yard touchdown run. Of course, Andrew Jackson scored from 28 yards out earlier in the first quarter, and then you had the 33-yard interception return by Reggie Williams. Daniel Boyd's been perfect. So uh, they, they got to keep that in mind, and they got to play heads up and try to get back in this ball game. And they need to start right now. It's early in the second need to start right now and, and, and get back in the ball game. And that's been the best part of the Bruins offense right there is Brian Wood returning those kicks. Only 130 pounder, he just takes it and has gotten him some pretty decent field position. He lowered his head and took it out to the 24 that time. So Brian Woods has done this uh, three times now. He's brought him back to good field position. The only thing is that they've, they've been unable to maintain that field position. Either penalties or turnovers have killed them every time. They'll start from their own 25. Thomas is your sophomore quarterback. And Jason Loring has been carrying most of the load. You see Greg Johnson, number two, coming out. He caught uh, seven passes last week in that big come from behind win. But the Bruins, really, it's one thing coming from behind 28 points last week, but against Southeast is another story. And Thomas is going up top to Greg Johnson. And we have the good coverage out there. Derek Payne is with him step for step. So Thomas, incomplete, it'll bring up second down and 10. As you see, Johnson, he uh, can also play quarterback and has before. Been moved out to a wide receiver. To make room for Thomas, the young sophomore quarterback. It looks like Loring and Jones in that backfield. And straight ahead goes Loring. And hanging on to him is Keaton Cromarty, number two. And Loring fights hard to get about four up to the 29-yard line. It'll bring, bring the third down. 21 to nothing. If you look at that southeast sideline, already in 
comfortable control. Looking for number 39 in a row. District wins dating all the way back to 85. Set a new state record. No other team has done that. Whatever district they, they've been in, whatever class. Haven't been winning since 1985, every district game. And there's a Thomas on the quarterback draw, but going nowhere. It looked like Cromartie got in there first. And also back there, Chris Peterson. So no gain on the play and another tough fourth down situation. Well, the, uh, they need to get this punt off this time without uh, allowing Brett Timmons to get in and, and uh, partially block it. He's killed them back there all, all night long, so they need to block real well for Loring and let him get a chance to get a good kick kickoff, and they did. This is a much better punt. So Loring gets it off, and it'll be fielded at about the 40. Here comes Kevin Covington, and he's going to bring it back. Away, 60 yard punt return for Covington. That's usually Peter Warwick's thing, but as Charlie mentioned, he's been hurting a little bit, so why not let Covington run one back? 60 yard return. So they finally get one kick, Charlie, and that it backfires. Anyway, it was a nice looking punt. Bad Warwick. news for Bay Shore. Kevin Covington is, uh, he runs like he's possessed here. He brings that ball all the way across the field to the near side. Looks like he's going to be forced out of bounds. Keeps his feet in, keeps on churning. Touchdown, Kevin Covington. 60 yards on the play. No one uh, southeast with so much speed. Of course, Kevin Covington holds on extra points. And is also a fine wide receiver. And we just showed us he can run those punts back. Southeast has more than just Peter Warwick who can do that trick. And Covington just proved it. Boyd proved that. Uh, no, he missed, he missed that one. Hooked it a little bit. So that's the first mistake Southeast has really made tonight. Missing an extra point. 27 to nothing. Early in the second quarter. Well, as, uh, Kevin Covington brings this ball, we get to see it again, and uh, he gets a block right, right there that hmm. uh, springs him free for the touchdown. It's a nice block, and can't even see the number, unfortunately. Well, Look, looks like it might have been that guy that we've been talking about, though. I, I didn't get to see him stretched out, but it looked an awful lot like Timmons right He's there. He's been all over. And some great camera work, too, for folks here at Paragon. Nice lay on that block. That's really the one. Covington would have still had a fine return, but that's the one that sprung him for six. And now the Bruins with 9.57 to go first half. They're on the short end of that 27 to nothing. This one gets returned all the way. Well, it's within one point of deja vu for Bayshore as compared to last week's on offense, defense, special teams. Right. They just do it all. And this is probably, I got to say, this is the best looking high school football team that I've seen in quite some time. I think they have a real shot at going all the way this year. Do. And Jason, oh, excuse me, Thomas hangs on, and he'll wish he would have given up that handoff. He's going to be tackled for about a three-yard loss. Chris Peterson back there had some help from Hines, Carl Hines, and Thomas is going to lose about three on the play. It'll bring up second down. So the Bruins, the only little bit of offense they've had has been Jason Loring running up the middle, but of course that hasn't been enough to... And you can see the, the favorite, if you, if you call it a betting line or whatever, 41 point favorite according to the Dunkel Index. Southeast, of course, ranked number one in that Dunkel Index, regardless of class. Second down, 11. Thomas running for his life, and he's not going to get away. Huge sack on the play. Try and catch a number. And Thomas. Looks frustrating for good reason. We'll take well, another. Carl Hines just goes in there and grabs a hold of Thomas, and you see he just won't let go. Got just enough jersey to be able to sling him for a, just a terrible loss, and uh, Hines gets the sack. That puts him at, uh, uh, they're looking at uh, second long here, second about 20, I would say 25 maybe. Inside their own 10 yard, and they've got to get out to the 30. Excuse me, third. First down. Yeah, excuse me, Jim, third and 20 and, and long, 21. So tough, uh, tough position for anybody, and especially against these Southeast Seminoles. 8.29 to go in our first half. Going to play it safe and get a couple of yards uh, on the ground with Loring, and he gets about three on the play, but that'll bring up fourth down in a bunch, and now the toughest play all night for Bayshore has been the punt, and they're going to have to try another one. Had a couple block and one return for the touchdown by Covington. So if you're Coach Mike Hobby on that Bayshore sideline, you can't feel too good about uh, Loring standing back in that end zone. 
Well, this time, let's try to watch uh, Brett Cummins, number 10. You see him lined up at the end on this punt formation. They get a flag on the play, so we're not going to get to see it right now. But just like to see how it is that he really gets in on these punts each time. He's blocked, partially blocked two of them in a row, and uh, he just always seems to be right around the ball when they uh, attempt to punt it. Dead ball, defensive encroachment over here. Still fourth down. So encroachment against Southeast and Bayshore with a little more room. And there comes Timmons, and Loring uh, gets the punt off, and it won't go very far, but at least it won't be returned. And let's see where they mark it. It will be in Bayshore territory, about the 47-yard line. So a 35-yard punt, no return, and Southeast once again with great field position, and a 27 to nothing lead. Here in the early going, we're not quite midway through the second quarter. We'll be right back here at Southeast next uh, week. Uh, I guess the next victim, you might say, coming in will be Bennett. And it's also homecoming for the Seminoles, so be sure and tune in for that. John Reeves is the quarterback. In motion is Washington. And he fakes it to McMillan. He's going to roll right and throw. He's got a man wide open. Making the catch down there, the guy we talked about in motion was Greg Washington. So a nice gain on the play. Well, you see uh, Reeves, he just floats back and spots Washington out there who's in motion and makes a nice pass to him and uh, another big gainer by Southeast. They're just uh, really chewing up the yard on each and every play now. So a 28 yard completion. Southeast threatening again here at the 19. And there comes McMillan. He takes it straight ahead and gets about seven down to the 12, just straight ahead blocking. And it'll bring up second down and about three. I think maybe uh, one thing that has happened tonight, obviously anybody that plays Southeast, you have to key on Daryl McMillan. And it, it appears that the defense of Bayshore has done just that. In fact, they have done it to the extent that receivers and other runners are freed up to make sure to chew up big gains on them tonight. So second down and three, and Reeves is going to keep it. Thought about pitching it. He's going to take it on in. And looked like he got a little hitch in his step there. I don't know if that was kind of a celebration thing or a full calf muscle, but Reeves uh, did enough to score. 12-yard run and the touchdown. John Reeves takes the, takes the handoff to uh, Andrew Jackson, then takes it around left end. What's a little step here? Now, there it is. I think he's just dancing and celebrating across the goal line. Maybe he was afraid he was going to trip over it. <laughs> I don't think Southeast has to worry about that tonight. The goal line has been very friendly. 33 to nothing as Boyd uh, missed the last extra point attempt to try to redeem himself. And it looks like he did. And if you're the Bayshore Bruins, get out of here alive. And hang on and try to win a game next week. As you look at one of those uh, Southeast linemen, Cedric Bell, all 285 pounds, try to get around him and get it, John Reed. Well, they do have a chance of getting in the playoffs, even though they are being solidly defeated here in the first half by Southeast. And uh, this thing may get a whole lot worse before it gets better. But uh, that's that's uh, one thing that Bayshore does for the first time in many, many years, even with what's happening here. They have an opportunity to get in the playoffs, and they're having a, a relatively good season as compared to what has happened to them over the past three or four years. Coach Mike Hobby has done a good job with this team. He's brought them back. They have a little self-esteem now, I think, that was lacking in, in some of their past teams. And, uh, Make sure we'll recover, but right now it's uh, it's tough to stay out there with this solid defeat that you're receiving. 34 nothing, and here comes Wood again, and he'll bring it out across the 25 to about the 26 yard line. In fact, Ryan Ronk, number 22, got in there first. So the Bruins will try it again from the 26. They have but one first down here in the first half, and just barely in in uh, plus yardage. Their own 26. 
Well, you hope that they will come out, Jim, and that they will uh, let Jason Loring and maybe Craig John Jones and Myra carry that ball and not pass it. I think they want that clock to go on right now and uh, not, not let this first half last any longer than is necessary. Just run the ball, chew it up, try to get on the scoreboard. And that's Craig Jones. They do just that as they run inside. And he gets a couple yards. Get it on the level of, of the field view. Southeast sideline. That's Big John Reed, number 12 quarterback. So a gain of about two on the play. If you count. It'll bring up second down eight. 540 remaining to go in our first half. Second down eight. Thomas is your quarterback, and it looks like Southeast is missing everybody, and here they come. That's bad news for Thomas, although he does get the pass off. Just enough to uh, get it intercepted. And that's picked off by the Knowles, uh, Alfonso Roundtree. So Thomas, three passes tonight, two interceptions. The other was incomplete. Alfonso Roundtree, you see defensive back, 5'11", 168-pound junior comes out of nowhere to pick off that Thomas pass. And uh, uh, I think probably Bayshore is pretty lucky. You see, watch Roundtree just comes right out of nowhere on this thrown pass right here, dives in, makes the catch, just right in front of the intended receiver, first down southeast. And, of course, the good pressure made that possible. And southeast, running it straight ahead. Jackson inside the 30 to about the 29, give him about three on the play. So southeast, 4.46 to go first half. They're already on top, 34 to zip. As you look at Paul Meckley, talking to his offensive coordinator there, Scott Taylor. And Paul Meckley, quite a personal accomplishment with uh, on the road to that 39th straight district win. And already some substitutes in there. That's Dan P. Hines, number 14, a backup uh, tailback. Already going to the bench here in the first half, Charlie. Well, that's, uh, I, I think that this, this will be a good opportunity for Southeast to play some of the, uh, uh, maybe the second, third stringers here. And they got a good, solid lead, 34 to nothing. I don't think anything's going to happen to that. And I'm glad to see Coach Meckley putting in some stuff. So it'll be third down seven. Reeves with a pitch. Hines, this is going to be a big loss. He does recover it. But a huge loss on the play, all the way back, uh, almost to midfield. So that's going to hurt Yanti Hines' average. He'll have to take the loss. But now take a look at this. He loses about 20. Well, obviously, uh, uh, miscommunication there. Hines is well ahead of the pitch. John Reeves throws it uh, behind him about two or three yards, and that thing rolls back, and we're now looking at uh, uh, fourth and long for Southeast. they got, a, I guess, their first punt of the night here. Fourth down and a bunch which means we'll probably see Daniel Boy. Clock is running down to the three-minute mark, and don't go away, we'll have a good... So fourth down and 27, and Boy, with the kind of the lazy snap and kind of a punchy line drive kick, and it's who else but Brian Woods again. So about a 30-yard punt. Well, this time Brian Woods, he doesn't get that good field position on that line drive punt because Rich Robich, you see that six foot two, 228 pound linebacker from Southeast just goes down and hogties and gets this tackle by Robich. He's been doing this for a long time. He just uh, plays very aggressive, nice tackle, hangs on, and uh, Brian, Brian Woods is stopped. There's another young man who's, who can continue on playing football after this year, the fine senior linebacker, Robich. Be a good one. And there's Lauren, just fighting ahead for about two yards. It'll bring up second down eight. We've been asked to announce, and you mentioned it earlier, about next week's homecoming yeah, right. with Southeast and Venice. And, uh, I wanted everybody to know that at 6.15, they'll, the floats will start here at uh, the stadium. And uh, then at 6.30, the, they will present the king and queen candidates. So uh, everybody want to join for the Southeast uh, homecoming with Venice High School next week. That'll be another district game for Southeast, just like this one is tonight. And straight ahead with Jason Loring. They're going with the one thing that's worked here a little bit as we wind down the first half. Loring with a couple more. And that'll bring up third down. We'll call it about 
six. Less than two minutes to go now in our first half. A quickly played one. We'll have a fine halftime show for you. As you look at John Reed, he hasn't had to throw the ball a lot. He's thrown a couple about three times, completed all three, but Southeast scoring on punt returns and defense scoring and uh, having a big time tonight. And Thomas trying that quarterback draw again. Maybe a yard on the play, trying to get away from, looked like uh, Chauncey Green back there, another one of those fine defenders, but he couldn't uh, couldn't get away from Chauncey. It'll bring up fourth down five. So Bayshore forced uh, to punt once again. The Bruins with three first half turnovers, two led the score. With the fumble and a couple of interceptions. Loring back to punt yet again. This will be his fifth punt here in the first half. Line of scrimmage is the 30. And it looks like the Bruins just wanted the clock to run down to give Southeast less time at the football. Not a bad idea. Red ball. Play a game. The offense. Still fourth down. And it'll move him back five. 27 seconds to go now in the first half, Charlie. And Southeast already, we're seeing a lot of new numbers out there. Paul Bangers, always the gentleman trying to uh, alleviate some of the pain being inflicted on Bayshore at this point. And here comes that rush, but Loring gets it off. And taking it at the 44, look out, here comes Kevin Covington again. This time, nice coverage, but we're going to have a flag as well. Covington, uh, not going to take that one all the way back. Field at about the 44. Let's see what the, the flag's all about. 16 seconds remain. Both on southeast. Clipping. Got a clip. Offense. That time, on that kick, uh, Bayshore had great coverage, and of course they were even further assisted here by the clipping penalty on southeast. But good, good uh, punt coverage and uh, stopped Covington with uh, no virtually no gain after he caught the ball. So Southeast with time for maybe one play. Clock is still running. They may not even snap it. Four seconds, three. They go ahead and do snap it. And hauling it out there, I believe that's Andrew Jackson. Getting a nice gain on the play of about nine. And that'll be the end of our first half. It's been all Southeast. 34 nothing here at halftime. Stay tuned for our halftime show. We'll be back right after these messages. And they're gonna keep it on the ground going to go rolling, and someone's got to pick it up. And that's uh, Andrew Jackson who picked it up, the fullback, and he takes it on up to about the 37-yard line where Southeast will start. Of course, Southeast, that defense was almost as active as the offense. Some kind of strange look at the first half stats here. Uh, Charlie, Southeast didn't even have to do it so much stats-wise. The only five first downs, but they scored so quickly, and on long runs, uh, you had the 28-yard touchdown run by Jackson. McMillan went 13 for a touchdown. Reed went 12. Then you had uh, Williams with the interception going 33 yards. Well, also they've scored with ease. I mean, it just looked real easy when they put the ball in the end zone. And here comes John Reeves, the quarterback, keeping it. And he's up to about the 40. We'll give him three on the play. And it'll bring up second down and seven. And one thing I've noticed looking across the field where the Bayshore fans are seated tonight, uh, and most games with a 34 to nothing halftime score, you would have seen people peel out. I don't think they've lost one. It looks like the same number that are sitting in those stands that were there uh, at the beginning of the ballgame. Second down, seven. For John Reeves in the Seminole. Short drop back, throws the pass, almost picked off, knocked down there nicely by Hansel Watson. Falls incomplete. It'll bring up third down and seven. And I don't want to forget, to, as we take a look at the replay here. Well, Hansel Watson is really surprised. He sticks that one hand up. Uh, I think he almost could have picked this ball picked this ball off, but uh, I think it shocked him. He was there in a hurry. He sticks the one hand up, knocks it down. It's a nice play by the linebacker. That Southeast offense only scored three of the five touchdowns. Of course, Kevin Covington ran a punt back 60 yards for a touchdown. Williams with the interception return. And then touchdown runs by the three guys in the backfield, Jackson, Reeves, and McMillan, 34 to nothing. Here comes the pitch back. And that's a new number across the 45. Let's see, 
before he stepped out of bounds. That was uh, was Nichols, Byron Nichols, number 31. So substituting already uh, going on. Byron Nichols is listed uh, on the program as a defensive back, but you see he's the tailback here, and look how quick he is as he turns that corner and uh, steps out of bounds about the 50-yard line, it appears. And it's going to be close enough. It looks like they want a measurement, Charlie. Well, it appears from here that he's maybe just a touch short. It's hard to see, though, because we're trying to look over those uh, guys standing up on that southeast sideline. Chad and Joe, come here and be ready. But that was Byron Nichols. Already McMillan getting a break. He only carried the ball actually three times. He had one touchdown called back on a clip. And we get that's about as close as you can get. And as I thought, he's a little bit short there, probably a little bit more than a foot on fourth down. You know, this may be the first game. I don't know. I didn't check this coming into the game, but it could very well be the first game this year that Daryl McMillan hasn't scored a touchdown. He had 16 touchdowns coming into the game. He was Manatee's leading scorer. And the one that he uh, scored tonight was uh, called back. Uh, excuse me, he did score one, did he? He scored one at 13, 13 yard run. That's right. So he has scored a touchdown tonight. My mistake. Fourth down, and it looks like the Seminoles are going to go for it. And straight ahead, they get it with ease. And look out. Here comes Andrew Jackson. Forget the first down. He's got a 53 yard touchdown run. Second long touchdown run for Jackson. And open it up. Now, wait a second. We do have a flag, and it's going to come back. So two long runs called back. And illegal block, blocking uh, below the waist is the call. I don't know if we have that on. I don't know if we have that on replay or not, but uh, if, if we do, that's certainly worth watching again as Andrew Jackson looks like a freight train carrying the ball. Here's a, a 500, 5'11", 207-pound running back, and he looks heavier than that. Yes, we get to see it. Watch Andrew Jackson as uh, he brings that ball to the near side. Watch him just uh, explode here. He got a pretty good block there. I think he saw below the knees as well. But look at him just carry that ball in. I mean, he runs like McMillan, really, in that particular case right there faster and has deceptive speed and he is huge 207 pounds and that's a 15 yard so that will come back a couple of big runs coming back to southeast and now i think they're having some trouble getting everyone on the punt team jackson's still out of breath was not out there so the seminoles are forced to call a uh, timeout and just think charlie this thing is already 34 to nothing we've had a couple of uh, touchdowns called back for southeast or could even be worse remember that happened on a fourth down Fourth down and a foot. Now, of course, it's fourth down and a whole bunch after the clipping call. And stay tuned after the game for the DeSears post-game show. Charlie Wells will have a couple of guests for you. Talk uh, with some of these Southeast Seminoles. Of course, they have a game next week. We'll be right back here at John Tyson Memorial Stadium. And Paul Meckley, a little upset with uh, maybe a team not concentrating here with that 34 to nothing lead and having the clip and the touchdown coming back. Trying to remind him they still a couple quarters of football left to play. Well, a smart timeout by Paul Meckley. He goes out, and even though this game's 34 to nothing, he's thinking down the road, and he's thinking about the big games that he has to play for the rest of this year, district games as well as playoff games, and he calls those mistakes to their attention and says, hey, let's not do that again. That cost us a, a big 53-yard touchdown run right there. And now Boyd will punt it away. Now fumble, but Bayshore does recover to avoid any further damage. <coughs> excuse me, further damage. 37-yard punt. So the Bruins will try and take it right there from their, well, we'll call it the 31, where they'll give it a shot. So no southeast touchdown in that possession. And we want to thank the folks at uh, Subway for, for, for providing uh, that uh, monster sandwich for our crew. And I'll tell you what, believe it or not, that thing, how, what is it, six, six feet? It's gone. I, I swear I'm looking over here in the press box, and that thing is empty. That big board has no more sandwich. Well, I got accused of eating a whole lot more of that I than I did. I think you had more than your share, frankly. <laughs> that time, that's Craig Jones trying to get somewhere, and he doesn't. Robick back there. Also, uh, standing in there, Derek Payne. So a loss on the play as we take a look at uh, 
Jones. Nice, nice hit by Payne right here, and he hangs on. Look at him grab those ankles and, and bring Jones down. Nice play. Nice defensive play by Derek Payne. Comes back from his defensive back position. Loss of four, second down. 9.53 to go in our third quarter. Southeast on top, 34 zip. And Thomas, who threw the ball a bunch last week, only three passes in the first half. Two of those were intercepted. And he's up top again, and I spoke too soon. That's number three, intercepted by Derek Payne. Three out of four have been intercepted. Take another look. Uh, Derek Payne, two big plays in a row. You remember he just tackled Jones on the preceding play. Then he jumps up and takes the interception away. Two, uh, two very, very nice plays by Derek Payne. So Southeast will try it from their own 49-yard line. First and 10. Just one running back in there, and we got the Reeves back in the shotgun. And he's going to throw all the way, and incomplete, and Peter Warwick, took a look at those hands a while, he should have had that one, and usually Peter Warwick pulled that kind of throw in. Jim, I believe they could run this play uh, uh, 10, 12, 13 times. They probably run it two or three times tonight already. As you saw uh, Warwick, he just cut across uh, the middle right to center field. Should have had that one. He's caught three uh, right there in the same spot tonight. And Reeves deserves credit. That was a beautiful throw. Nice timing pattern over the middle. Warwick didn't hang on. Second down, 10. Bayshore blitzing and Reeves in trouble, but uh, he responds very well. And he might go 25-20, a 51-yard run on a broken play. Reeves, looks like he's a little stunned. It was, it was that easy, Charlie. Well, he should be, really. Uh, you see somebody's injured out there. See the coaches are running out. Look like two players. Uh, Bayshore and a Southeast player laying on the ground injured. Uh, see the, see the Bayshore player is getting up, but somebody from Southeast still laying out. We'll try to get a number for you in a minute and see who that is. But uh, it's all busted and downhill from their own. Really should have been stopped for about a five-yard gain. Instead, there he goes for a touchdown. John Reeves, uh, he was, as you stated, Jim, he was the only surprised person on the field that he was out there in the open by himself. He strolled Joe McDonald, the fine tight end. Hurt making a block on that Reeves touchdown run, but he appears okay. He was able to walk off the field. And Daniel Boyd still seems okay as he makes another point after to make it 41 zip. 41 to nothing here with 8.56 to go third quarter. And remember, even earlier uh, in this half, Jackson had 53 yards. It, it came back. Uh, that score was nullified because of a clip. But uh, moments later, after an interception by Derek Payne, John Reeves goes 51 yards, kind of even things out. 41 to nothing southeast as we wait for yet another Daniel Boyd kickoff. And, of course, the Bruins, you, you mentioned a good point at halftime, Charlie, that they can't let this uh, get them down. They're still in this thing and can uh, guarantee that runner-up spot in the playoffs with the victory uh, next Friday. Well, they lost to Manatee by this same identical score right, right now. But the only bad news is here we've got, we got a, we got a full go. quarter and, and darn near another full quarter to go. But uh, they were blown out pretty bad by Manatee, uh, beaten pretty soundly by Tampa Catholic, and came back to uh, recover with three games uh, in a win. As you see the, uh, the uh, kickoff taken in the end zone to be brought out to the 20-yard line. But they've been blown out of a couple of games and, and still able to come back and win three in a row. So they're still in this thing from a uh, district perspective. They'll be in the playoffs all month early. So starting from their own 20 are the Bruins. They have but one first down. Including that 20-yard run by Jason Loring, their best uh, play from scrimmage. And other than that, that Southeast defense has just been saying, uh-uh. First and 10 for Randy Thomas. He's had a tough night. He's tried to throw the ball four times. Three of those have been intercepted. He's going to keep it on the ground, and Jones is going to fumble, and it's going to be recovered down there by Carl Hines. So the second fumble loss of the night, and Southeast is back in business. And that's interesting. We've got to give Mr. Dunkel some credit, I guess. Maybe we don't as often as we should, but he, he picked this one by 41. But now, unless he was picking that as a two-and-a-half-quarter game, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dunkel might be off a little bit, too. He 
He might not have seen that fumble coming right there. <laughs> so fumbled by Jones. Recovered by Hines at the Bayshore 22. And straight ahead, that's Yan T. Hines, not Carl Hines, who recovered that last fumble. So the subs are in, uh, uh, quite a few of them anyway. Reeves is still in at quarterback. Warwick's still in at wide receiver, but that was Yan T. Hines on that trip. Bring up second down. And about... Brings him out. Southeast already on top. 41 to nothing. And the pitch goes back. It's Hines again. And uh, nice reaction there by Ronnie Walker on the stop. Stopping Hines after he gets a couple. And T. Hines. And we'll take another well, you look. see Hines carry, uh, carry around, and this is his second carry of the night. They uh, call Metro with putting in. Subs and they make a pretty good run there. Just how good is uh, is Southeast? Uh, well, everybody in the nation thinks they're pretty good. The National Prep Poll has them ranked number five, and uh, Miami uh, South Ridge and Manatee has joined that uh, National Prep Poll at 22 and 23, number 22 and 23 in the nation. But uh, oh, nice catch on a nice throw, and actually some good defense down there by Hansel Watson but not good enough making the catch down there. That's Greg Washington. He's his second catch of the night. Well, this is a spectacular catch. Watch Greg Washington just go up in the uh, up in the air. Reese throws that thing, just jumps it up there. Washington makes a nice catch, almost uh, takes it in. It rests on about the one-yard line. So the fourth completion of the night for Reeves, a 15-yarder, makes it first and goal. Southeast about to increase that 41 zip lead. Here comes Yan T. Hines, and he does, I don't think he got in there. Some good penetration by Chad Chivarella. So Hines doesn't punch it in there. Bring up second down and go. The, uh, some more about that national prep football poll is conducted by a guy by the name of Doug Huff. He's a national high school sports historian panel of 35 sports writers. They have them listed as uh, number five, Southeast 7010, number five, and in the South region top 10, they're number two behind Montgomery, Alabama. You see, is that Hines again carrying the ball? Looks like it's fumbled and made sure it's recovered it. And it is a touchback. So Hines coughs it up. And see, Hines carry the ball right there, stripped from him. Uh, the fumble uh, goes in the end zone. Bayshore pounces on it, and they got it first down and 20. So Southeast with their first turnover of the night. And a break for the Bruins. They stop, uh, stop the points and get it back out on the 20-yard line. Where it'll be first down and 10 for Bayshore. So they've avoided uh, giving up any more points for the time being. 6.15 left to go in the third quarter. Thomas still a quarterback facing that tough southeast defense. He's going to go back up top and overthrow and trying to find Greg Johnson down there who was well covered by Charlie Brown. Falls incomplete. Second down, Tim. In the, uh, in the local uh, Florida Sports Riders Association, where southeast is ranked number one, just some uh, teams that we might want to think about in probably you might see in the playoffs later on down the line. Daytona Beach, uh, Seabreeze, and Boca Raton, Olympic Heights, Merritt Island, St. Petersburg, Dixie Hollands. There's a real surprise for you. There's one of the uh, Pinellas teams that's doing good, and they haven't had much success over there in the last few years. Second down, 10 Bruins. And back to Jason Loring. And he's been fighting all night as Robic hangs on to him. But Loring gets about three on the play. It'll bring up third down, seven. So Southeast has been down there close. Think of it, with that 41 nothing lead, they've had a couple of uh, touchdowns called back and then just fumbled the ball into the end zone. This could be a lot worse than it already is at 41 zip. 5.40 to go in our third quarter. The Bruins looking for their second first down of the game. And you look 
Lockett Thomas, the sophomore quarterback. Loring and Jones behind him. And he's going to try and roll, and Jones juggles it, but hangs on and turns it upfield. I think he's got the first down. So a nice effort. And Jones and Bayshore with their second first down of the night. Well, Jones does well to maintain his poise here and hang on to this ball. Watch him. He juggles it, juggles it again, and it just kind of right up on top of his helmet, back down on his face guard, kind of slides around, and then he uh, holds on to it and, uh, and brings it in on, and for a first down. And uh, just a, really a good concentration there by Greg Jones. And out across the 30, so the Bruins with their second first down. It's their first one here in the second half. And we look at some young uh, Seminoles getting ready, working on that kicking game. Yeah. I want to thank our chain crew tonight, Mr. Wayne Beck, Mr. Terry Price, and Mr. Chris Roberts. Thank you, gentlemen. There you go. Get you somebody to hold it for you. Try to come off the tee. Pretty good <laughs> <Not kick. bad. laughs> One of the world's shorter kickers. That's right. <laughs> Who are those guys? Yeah. He knows the NBA star one day. <laughs> Not camera shot. <laughs> so 5-15. We've got a timeout on the field. And remember, this is a, a win for Southeast. It's business as usual over here at John Kiker Memorial Stadium, beating up on whoever's coming in. But uh, as we take a look at an injured Seminole down there. Brings it around to the near side. Watch him just, watch it comes up there off his helmet, kind of rolls around, back down on the face guard. And finally, he gets a handle on it. And, if and you a pretty good run after the handle. And if you asked him, he said I had a, he'd say I had it all the way. Had it all the way. Never any doubt. So first down for the Bruins. Box starts were right at about the five minute mark. Bayshore trying to at least get some points on the board and avoid the shutout. Of course, they were shut out earlier this year by Manatee. And there, I think we got another fumble. Wait a minute. Yes, yes we do. And Williams again recovers a fumble. And getting up. Slowly there is uh, Williams. He, he's had the ball tonight more than a lot of the Southeast offensive players. Well, look at Reggie Williams here. I mean, what is it he can't do? He's uh, intercepted one and ran that back for a touchdown. Now he's uh, got his second fumble recovery on the night. He's uh, quite a defensive ball player. At the 29. So Southeast, once again, in great position to score. And the sixth turnover of the night for the Bayshore Bruins. Three interceptions, three fumbles. Reeves back to throw. He's got a man open and off the hands of Kevin Covington. Ball's incomplete. It'll be second down 10. So another Bayshore turnover on a uh, fumbled handoff attempt. And for a copy of tonight's game, you can call Paragon at 748-3816, Monday through Friday. Do that during business. And that's for any of our games we've had on uh, this fall or will have on. Two more regular season games after this, and then we head into the playoffs, and we'll see these Southeast Seminoles again in those playoffs, and the Manatee Hurricanes as well, who've already wrapped up their district. And the pitch goes back, and kind of a wild one, and that's Nichols, who's going to have to take a big loss. He did a nice job on uh, getting that thing back, but he's going to lose some yardage on the play. Well, it's hard to tell just exactly who goes wrong here, whether Reeves is, uh, is pitching to the right place and the, and the uh, back is following in the wrong place. I would suspect that that is true because you have the uh, sub in there. But uh, that's happened a couple, three times tonight, and I'm sure that's something that Coach Meckley is not going to be happy about. Uh, he wants this offense to be very precision as we go into the uh, – get ready for the uh, district playoffs. Oh, and Kevin Covington, <laughs> a real early start. I didn't think they were going to throw a flag. Going to let Kevin uh, get a wind sprint in there. And that will cost uh, Southeast five. Encroachment on the offense. And Still third down. And I'll tell you, Charlie, this is, a, as we look at, uh, we, we won't see, maybe we'll see, there he goes, <laughs> Kevin yeah. Covington, who's halfway down the sideline. He's just an inch or two offside here. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got him coming Like back. a cat kind of, you know, <laughs> slip back in. <laughs> Third down, 23 for John Reeves in Southeast. Back to throw, and here comes the rush. Look out, John Reeves, and he's going to get nailed. That was a heck of a pass rush. 
and leading it back there for the Bruins was Chris Wilson. And now we got a flag down, but he came storming back there. Fourth, uh, fourth and 35, somewhere up in there, 37. And uh, still, I guess it makes too much difference. Boyd back to punt, and that will find its way into the end zone. So a 42-yard punt, it will come out to the 20. Yeah, we found, oh, number 31 is actually Calvin Williams. We've got him uh, listed differently on our program. So number 31, who we've been calling Byron Nichols, that is Calvin Williams. And we'll give him his due. And I'll tell you, Charlie, right now, it's Southeast getting to play a lot of people. We've got some new people out there. But I think Paul Meckley's probably a little concerned, even though it sounds crazy leading 41 to nothing. But they look a little lackadaisical. Bayshore's not really a, a legitimate opponent for them. And they're probably a little bit concerned because in playoff time, uh, they're, they're not going to see these type of teams, and uh, they're looking a little lackadaisical here in the second half. Maybe a cause for concern. And straight ahead is Jones. He's going to fumble it again. Uh, they're going to call it dead. Back uh, where he was hit there initially by Keaton Cromarty, number 51. Uh, make sure as you see uh, they fumble again. Uh, this is something really that they hadn't had all, they've had a few problems with turnovers this year, but uh, nothing of this significance. Tonight they're dropping the ball an awful lot. This time they were fortunate enough to uh, have the, it called as the, as the ground causing the fumble and maintaining possession, but they've really been sloppy with uh, maintaining possession of the ball tonight. Second down, seven. On the 23, Thomas, he's going to pitch it, and Jones is going to try and get somewhere. He does get a couple. He runs into Charlie Brown across the way. But uh, we'll give him a, uh, and we do have a flag down. 2.44 left to go third quarter. The officials talk it over. We'll wait, uh, wait for the signal. Face, Face mask. mask over here. First down. So the Bruins will use the penalty and get themselves a first down. The one thing that Southeast defense has done extremely well tonight is they have absolutely shut down Randy Thomas's passing game, and that's something that they really need in order to move the ball on Southeast. Coming into tonight, he was 39 for 83 with 470 yards, six touchdowns, and no interceptions, but he's been unable to throw it all on Southeast tonight, especially to his favorite receiver, Greg Johnson, who used to be the quarterback for this team. First down, at the, and there's Thomas is going to fumble, but I think he got it back. So the Bruins fumble again, but don't give this one up. They've already coughed up six turnovers. And Thomas will lose a couple of yards on the play. It's really hard to figure out just what is happening down there with the ball. Uh, being fumbled so much by Bayshore. I mean, the field is not wet, and it's uh, Southeast is not doing it. So it's just something that's uh, uh, just a, a real break in their concentration somewhere, a real lack of it. Second down, 12, and here comes Jones. And he fights ahead for about six yards. He follows his fullback, Jason Loring, out there to about the 43. And it'll uh, bring up third down. Six yards for Jones. Craig Jones, 5'8", 140-pounder. Uh, you see him, he runs pretty good, though. He goes through there and uh, uh, picks up a nice game. But he's really a, a small running back. He's a senior, uh, but he's, uh, he's done a, a pretty good job when they he's been called on tonight. Third down, six now for Bayshore. They have yet to uh, cross midfield into Southeast Territory. And here comes Thomas trying to change that, and he does. He'll cross midfield, a nice gain, down to about the 41-yard line. So a good-looking run, a 16-yard run for Thomas, and a first down for the Bruins. That's the first time the option has truly worked all night long. You see Thomas uh, fakes the pitch out and, and or, or looks if he's going to pitch out, and then he keeps it and just turns it on up the near side, and that is, without a doubt, their best run from the line of scrimmage all night. First trip into Southeast Territory. And the Bruins, first and 10. And 
here comes Jones. He gets back to the line of scrimmage and breaks a couple tackles. He's got another first down. So a good looking run for Jones to about the 24 yard line. See Bayshore's fans offering a little encouragement there. Craig Jones, uh, he, he now uh, takes his hand off and uh, just fights for a little, gets breaks a line of scrimmage and uh, breaks a couple of tackles and uh, gets another first down. Nice run by Craig Jones. And those fans needing something to cheer about over there tonight. What they'd really like to do is see Bayshore get on the scoreboard. And it's down to the 25 where they have a first down. Got about 20 seconds left to go in our third quarter. And Thomas is going to lay the ball on the ground. And it's going to be recovered by who else? Southeast. And now we got flags all over the place. And Southeast with yet another fumble recovery. And they're 88.8 uh, and Manatee following in there closely behind, but uh, uh, I think uh, we're just about to run out of time in the third quarter. Five seconds remaining. And let's see if Southeast, Southeast High School, we've got a new quarterback on the field. That's Alfonso Roundtree, number 25. So John Reeves is going to get the rest of the night off. And we've got another flag now try and give you those new numbers as we go here. Round tree number 25. You look at him, he's a quarterback, uh, junior, and looks to be in line to inherit this uh, job when John Reeves moves on. Fine senior passer for Southeast, who's getting the rest of the night off. He scored two touchdowns tonight, did Reeves. 12-yard run, 51-yard run. And another penalty against Southeast. Back at the 14-yard line. First down after the penalty. Roundtree is back there with uh, got Corey McDuffie back there, number 24, and Yan T. Hines, who didn't look to be set. And that one's going to come back, too. Hines uh, pulled out a little early there. That was Corey McDuffie on the carry, but it'll come back. Hines had that rolling start. Now oh, they decline the penalty. Second down. Well, Bayshore is obviously going to be uh, two and one on their district record after this game, but uh, by no means out of the playoff picture. And uh, we're told even if they lose next week, there's still a chance still a for chance a three-way kind of tie. Crazy so three-way tie thing. Gives them something to play for. Busting straight ahead. That's McDuffie. Getting ahead of steam there, and he picks up about 10 yards on the play. Still short of the first down after all the penalties. But a nice looking run by the backup fullback. Corey McDuffie. Only 5'6. We take a look at him. And there's McDuffie lowering his head. And that's got a real low center of gravity. And he pops through there for about 10. We got 10.37 to go in our fourth quarter. And straight ahead for a couple more. I believe that's McDuffie answering the call once again. Give him a two more yards. The Southeast going conservative here in the fourth quarter, not uh, looking to add uh, more to the wound here. Corey McDuffie, 5'6", 179 pounds. He's a junior. And that'll bring up fourth down, and we'll be looking at Daniel Boyd again out to punt the football. Ten, uh, ten minutes and counting to go in this fourth quarter. Southeast on top, 41 to nothing. 
going to be a perfect 8 and 0 and now 3 and 0 in the district. Bayshore will drop to 3 and 5 and 2 and 1 in the district. And Boyd with plenty of time. And that's knocked away by Woods who almost almost loses his head on the play Brian Wood. But he uh, comes out alive on that one. So that'll be a nice looking punt about a 38 yarder for Boyd and maybe a yard return. Well, I have to give Brian Woods credit here. He's a gutsy, gutsy ball player. He he uh, fumbles that ball and, and he's trying to pick it up and knows that footsteps are descending upon him in a hurry, but he still manages to hang on. And uh, he's been one of the bright spots really on special teams for the uh, Bayshore Bruins tonight. So the Bruins will give it another try here. Still no points on the board. They trail 41 zip, 918 to go in our fourth quarter. And we've got a Seminole with uh, some helmet problems, trying to get those taken care of. And Randy Thomas, who's had a long night at that quarterback spot, going to hand it off to Craig Jones, who maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. He's smothered down there. Jamie Cook, number 60. Taking a shot as as is Antonio Shepard. Actually loses a couple on the play. He'll bring up second down 12. This is the third time on the year that Southeast has scored more than 40 points in a ball game. They have really worn some people out. Jim, I think you'd have to admit, to keep the regulars in on this game, the score could really be out. I Oof. mean, it could be 50 plus yeah, and very been. easily. Could have been real crazy. Remember, we had a couple touchdowns called back. And back to throw is Thomas. He's got a man out there, and I, Greg Johnson makes a nice-looking catch in into uh, southeast territory at the 48-yard line. So a nice 18-yard completion. That's Thomas's first completion on the night. Well, this is a nice catch by Thomas. You see, uh, uh, just reaches up and, uh, and and hauls it in, and uh, makes a makes a nice catch and, and takes the. Uh, Makes a, uh, Greg Johnson, I'm sorry, makes the catch, not Thomas. Thomas is the one throwing it. But uh, that's he, that's uh, his favorite receiver, and that's the first time he's been able to reach him tonight uh, with any type of play at all. And Thomas back again, and let's see, does he have another completion? Are they going to give it to uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Thomas. Thomas? And they call it complete. So he may, scoops it out of the dirt, and he gets eight yards. Well, Randy Thomas goes back and throws to Jeremy Thomas. You see a uh, kind of a line drive there, and it, it just barely picks it out of the grass. And uh, he's able to get away with the catch, and I think it was a good call by the officials. I don't believe he trapped it. So now second down and one after the completion, and Thomas is staying in the air. He's got a man down there, too, and Greg Johnson, who dropped the football, Trying to make that tough over-the-shoulder catch uh, would have been a good one. He couldn't come up with it. That was a, a tough catch for uh, Johnson to make there. He uh, he has his uh, defenders beat, but it would have taken just an absolutely uh, perfect catch there to haul that in. But he drops it. But he looks like he he looks like he's going to make the catch, and it was a nice throw really by uh, Randy Thomas again. And it's third down now in one. Stay tuned after the game chart. I'll have that post-game show for you. I'm Jim Brockman along with Charlie Wells. Thank you for tun tuning in this evening for high school football on Paragon Cable. Bayshore trying to get some points on the board here in the fourth quarter. Thomas again with the throw, and he's got a man down there. And another completion to Thomas again. So Randy Thomas to Jeremy Thomas. And another first down Bruin. Well, this time he was looking at about a third and one, third and two, and uh, I think everybody was expecting him maybe just to throw something short just across the yard marker, but he uh, unloads there for about 10 or 12 yards. And a nice play, and uh, looks like Randy Thomas is starting to uh, find some open receivers now. Thomas with his second catch. Before this drive, Bayshore had not completed a pass. And again, Thomas, and he's going deep, and Johnson trying to get at it. Can't come up with it. And we have a flag, and that might be the offensive pass interference there, Charlie. Johnson looked like he uh, had a forearm under the chin of the uh, Southeast defender. Either that or I'd say it could very well be offensive, but Brian Nichols uh, 
come back shaking his head there, so I don't know uh, exactly who it was called on, but it, it probably uh, this this is one of those flags that could go either way, and you see the officials over there discussing it. They probably haven't made up their mind either. Best interference over here. That's going to go against Southeast, so the Bruins get the break. We'll take a look at it. You be the judge at home. You've got as good a look at it as we do. It looks like Nichols just inadvertently uh, collides with the receiver there. That is really a close call, you'd have to admit. But, uh, Derry, uh, but uh, uh, Greg Johnson is the one that uh, reaps the benefit from this call, and Brian Nichols is called for pass interference. So it'll bring up first down. An interesting thing tonight, Charlie, we've got two 31s running around. We were calling Nichols carrying the ball earlier. That was actually Calvin Williams. Now we do actually see Nichols and uh, I'd like, to, I'd like to see those guys maybe get separate uniforms. <laughs> I think uh, it makes it very difficult, especially when you don't know them uh, by first name. And even if you did, kind of hard to see who those guys are through those helmets. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not easy to <laughs> call them out when they get the same number. So another first down. And another completion. Greg Johnson looking for that end zone, and he's going to get it. A 17-yard touch. And look, Greg Johnson, that's one of those relief touchdowns. Yes, it is. So yeah, Bayshore yeah. gets on the board. Give Greg Johnson credit. I mean, he wanted to score. Uh, really should have never been allowed into the end zone, but it's just a lot of desire on the part of this young man to take it on in. You see Thomas uh, unloads to Johnson. He makes a good catch in the first place, and then you see some missed tackles. There's the one right there. He spins, he spins, and on into the end zone. Touchdown, Bayshore. They're finally on the scoreboard with 6.38 to go in the game. He takes that ball pretty good hands there, huh? He's straight ahead. Yeah, hops right up. Look at this guy. Look how tough he is. Runs over that one uh, tackler right there, would-be tackler, and uh, takes a whole bunch of them to bring Rich Robich down. He's on that sideline right now saying, if I'd have gotten a block, if I'd have gotten a block. <laughs> First and 10 at the 43. Roundtree's your quarterback. And here comes the other number 31, Calvin Williams, who crosses midfield to about the 47. He's close to a first down. Nichols is the number 31 defender, and Williams is the number 31 offender, I guess we'll call him. I wonder maybe if there was a fight over this jersey number. Somebody likes 31, a couple of guys do. So it'll be second down and one. Ryan Rock, number 22 in there as a wide receiver. McDuffie now, and uh, we have an official timeout. Essentially, Roundtree had 16 touchdowns coming into tonight, tonight's game, but uh, uh, he's, had a, he's had a great season already. Why not rest him? And Roundtree trying to get around the corner, and he pitched that thing awfully late. Looked like he was almost stopped, but he did get the ball off to Williams, who gets about three yards on the play. Living dangerously, but it works. And it's a first down. I think going back in uh, Coach Meckley's mind is, uh, what was the tailback's name that was injured? Was it Green uh, a couple of years ago? Not Green, not Richard Green, but uh, the tailback that played for him that was injured in the last I know game of the mean, season. Sure. I'll come up with his name in a moment, but I think that's probably got to go back into uh, Coach Meckley's mind here tonight as he takes Darrell McMillan out. So getting off the late pitch there is Roundtree. And now yet another... Uh, New number in there, that's number 42. That's Corey Williams. And he gets a couple on the play. And we want to thank Robert Evans, that's a good memory. Freddie Smith was the fine uh, tailback who uh, in that last game, I believe it might have been that Bayshore game, Charlie, heading right into the playoffs, Southeast was rolling and boom. He got hurt, and uh, Manatee, or excuse me, Southeast went ahead and lost that first playoff game. And that's, I think we're back to Yan T. Hines really spreading that ball around tonight. And Hines with about six on the play. So third down, and Southeast putting a drive together here with, uh, with backup players. Hines just carries again and, and does some... Uh Stumbling around and some uh, uh, doing a little darting there, and, and it's another good carry by him. Third down, two. And here's Williams trying to get that first down. He didn't get much, but he's going to be awfully close. 
just outside the 35 yard line. And Williams, he appears to be down now. He's not getting up real quickly. That one, he got popped pretty good right the last four in it. We'll be back here next week. Bennis comes to town. And they're going to go on fourth down with the clock run. Roundtree's been the quarterback most of the second half, and he's going to sneak it. And he, he had all kinds of room there on a quarterback sneak. You don't often see that kind of daylight. But uh, Roundtree gets nine on the play. His first carry of the night. So Southeast marching here with that 41 to 6 lead. The reserves are on the field for Southeast and they continue to move the football. As we approach the three minute mark. And straight ahead, this is McDuffie. And not much doing, maybe a yard on the play. Wilson in there on the stop for the Bruins. Got to be a tired defense. They've been playing a lot of defense tonight. 241 remaining. Maybe a yard on that last play for McDuffie. Don't forget to join Charlie Wells uh, for our post game show. He'll have an offensive and defensive player of the game for it. And don't forget to join us next week. We'll see these Seminoles again, the number one ranked team in 4A. And there's uh, the pitch. And Yanti Hines. Does a little pirouette and gets himself a couple extra yards. <coughs> Excuse me. And that will bring up second down. Round trees a quarterback. John Reeves sat down long ago in the third quarter after scoring a couple of touchdowns. And what a great night for that Southeast defense. Seven Bayshore turnovers. And Southeast there to take advantage of all of them. Third down seven. Clock stopped with uh, Hines being run out of bounds. And straight ahead is McDuffie for a couple more yards. This will be the 39th straight uh, district victory for the Southeast Seminoles, a new state record. Under the two minute mark now. And on fourth and five Southeast, no need to give the ball, we're gonna try it again here. Under that two minute mark. And straight ahead and McDuffie's gonna lose a couple. And they'll turn the ball over on downs. And Charlie's headed down to the field to conduct our post-game interviews. I'm Jim Brockman for Paragon Cable, and we thank you for joining us tonight. With uh, time running out here, a minute and a half to go, I want to thank all of our fine sponsors here on Paragon Cable High School Football, 89th Street Pizza, Conley Buick, DeSears Appliances, American Bank, DeSears Central Air, Brown & Sons Funeral Home, Alex Karras Lincoln Mercury Subway, Leeds Building Products, and the Bradenton Herald. Making it possible for you to watch these games this fall. We approach the one minute mark, and Thomas saw what he liked up in the air, and he's gonna try it again, but he's gonna have to run this time. And it looks like he'll end up uh, with maybe a couple of yards on the plays. He's chased down from behind. Quentin Allen chasing him down. But he gets a couple of yards on the play, and it'll bring up second down. Ball dressing just inside the 25. We got two more regular season games for you here on Paragon. Back here for homecoming here at Southeast Venice. Then we'll have Palmetto Bayshore, that county rivalry, to finish up the regular season. We'll have Manatee High School for you in the playoffs, these Southeast Seminoles. And Thomas going deep. And there's nobody there. Overthrows, falls incomplete, and that stops the clock with 19 seconds remaining. So the Bruins with time for maybe one or two more plays. And this game will be history, 41 to six. Barring something unusual, that will be our final score. Bayshore will fall to three and five overall in the season. They had won three games in a row. They'll fall to two and one in the district. Southeast stays perfect at eight and zero oh and three and zero, oh, respectively. 19 seconds. Ball 
resting at the 24-yard line. Looks like the Seminoles thinking about blitzing. Here they come, and Thomas is going the other way. Gets rid of the pass, and incomplete. That will stop the clock with 13 seconds left. Trying to find Holt. Matt Holt now, I feel. Ball is slightly underthrown. 13 seconds remain. And Southeast will set that record 39th straight district win dating all the way back to 1985. These guys have not lost a district game. They've been in three or four different districts during that time, but nobody's been able to beat them. Not in the district. Third down and nine for the Bruins at their own 24. And of course, uh, Paul Meckley on the verge of winning that 10th consecutive district title. They can make that official next week with a win over Venice. And Seminole's going to pick up a, another 15-yard penalty. They have been penalized a bunch tonight. That's their sixth 15-yard penalty. And we look at the uh, band across the way. 13 seconds remaining, another first down for Bayshore on the penalty. And Thomas back to throw. He lobs it up there, and it's going to be caught, but out of bounds. And I think we're going to have another pass interference penalty on the Seminoles. He caught the ball, but was well out of bounds. Let's see what the uh, ruling is on that. Maybe they're going to say he was forced out. Seven seconds showing on the clock. Should be a 15-yard penalty and another Bayshore first down. Defensive pass interference, first down. So seven seconds remain. Time for another play, perhaps two, if it's an incomplete pass or a defensive penalty. First and 10 at the 45. Thomas, the quarterback. He's getting some protection. And he's going to go deep, and he's got Holt down there, almost intercepted by Nichols. That would have been the eighth turnover of the night, and mercifully, that will end. End it for the Bruins here. Southeast goes on to win 41-6. to Don't go away. We'll have our postgame show in just a moment. I'm Jim Brockman for Paragon Cable. Venice here at uh, Kiker Stadium, and uh, then it looks like to me you're off to the playoffs. Well, we got we have Bartow before that, but then yeah, we, we get in the playoffs again now for the ninth time in a row. We're all happy about that. That's what we told the kids. We didn't care about 38. We cared about this game right here so we could get another notch on the board up there and be able to go in the playoffs like we're now going to be able to do with the fact that we'll have the home field advantage for the first three games of the playoffs as long as we're able to keep winning. So it's a good break for us. Well, you put a lot of subs in tonight. You were ahead early in the ball game. Uh, uh, a lot of people got to play. Notice you pulled uh, Darrell McMillan out and uh, gave him a chance to get some rest. Also, got to be some memories about a, tail, about a tailback that was injured here a few years ago, and uh, you got to be thinking about that. Well, we went in at halftime. Not only did Darrell have a little ankle twist, Reggie Davis had a sore shin. Another kid was limping, and, you know, there's no sense getting any people hurt. We played a lot of people tonight. That's why it got a little I didn't like that. Had a few too many penalties at the end with the second group in, but, you know, we had to let everybody play and, you know, able to uh, make sure that they get on the field, too. They practiced long and hard, and they deserved a chance to get out there and, and try and do their thing, and some of them did and had success. Coach, this is one of those years where offense and defense and special teams has all come together for Southeast. I think you've only given up 17 points uh, to any one opponent. That's the highest that's been scored on you all year long, and you put some pretty hefty points on the board. Uh, with this offensive team. Special team play has just been fantastic. You're ranked number five in the nation. You feel like this is your best? Uh, I think all around, when you mention the kicking game and all those other parts, but yes, it, uh, I think it very well might be because we're able to do a lot of things offensively that we've never tried before because of the experienced kids we had coming back. I think changing the defensive scheme and getting a couple, one more faster kid on the field helped us. And then I think our special teams people are taking a lot more pride. We have another kickoff, a punt return for touchdown today. Brett Timmons did an outstanding job blocking those first two kicks. 
he was a little disappointed that we went for a return later on because he wanted to get a block, you know. So um, we're real proud of the whole team. They've played real well, and it's been a good run so far. Well, congratulations to you on another win, another big nose win, another big district championship, playoffs, all those things. You've heard it before, but uh, we just want to congratulate you, and uh, we want to follow you all the way through the playoffs. We hope you win a state championship this year, Coach. Thank you very much, Charlie, because that's what we really like to do once. Coach Paul Meckley, he's the head coach of the Southeast Seminoles. We'll be back with the offensive player of the game. Just one moment. We're back with quarterback John Reeves of the Southeast Seminoles. He's our offensive player of the week. Uh, John, we had a great game tonight. 41-6 uh, to win over Bayshore. A uh, big district game for you. Both of you 2-0 and coming in. But uh, you had a you had a, just a great game. 51-yard running touchdown. Uh, you also rushed for another for 12 yards. Got to feel good about this Seminole team. They're looking awful good. Yeah, you know, I feel good about it. You know, we come out every day. We practice hard. You know, we... um. We concentrate, we concentrate just on Bayshore this week because we know they were going to come into this game thinking they could beat us. But, you know, we, you know, it was a lot of talk with a couple of the guys from Bayshore. But, you know, we just let them talk, and we came out, and, you know, we, we hope they ate their words tonight. Well, John, you've had a real strong arm passing, and your old pal out there, Peter Warwick, he had an injured ankle tonight, but didn't seem to handicap him much, and you hit him with a couple of good passes. Uh, he seems to get open an awful lot, doesn't he? Yeah, you know. You know, his ankle's still nagging him a little bit, but, you know, I think by next week his ankle will be at 100%, and, you know, he'll be as quick as he, he was tonight. I've always believed that uh, you'll never have a good quarterback unless you have a good offensive line. I think the Southeast Seminole offensive line is one of the best that we've seen in years. They, they seem to give you an awful lot of protection right up front. Uh, also, uh, Andrew Jackson and Darrell McMillan, they've had a lot of success because of that offensive line. You got anything uh, you'd like to say about them? Yeah, you know, our offensive line is young. You know, they come out and work just as hard as any other offensive line team around here. You know, they, they're they just a great bunch of guys. You know, they come out, you know, they're strong. They have a lot of heart, even though they lack inside. You know, their heart is big, you know. And I I like to get, you know, I like to um, give this game to the offensive line because, you know, they blocked well. Even though Bayshore ran some blitzes, and, you know, but the offensive line, they, were, they just blocked well for me tonight. Big John Reeves, six foot three, senior quarterback for the Southeast Seminoles. We want to present him with the DeSears Offensive Player of the Week. John, congratulations to you. Thanks. Okay, buddy. We'll be right back with the Defensive Player of the Week in just one moment. We're back with Brett Timmons, number ten. He's linebacker for the Southeast Seminoles, and he's our uh, Player of the Week defensively. Uh, Brett couple of uh, sacks tonight and also uh, some uh, fumble recoveries uh, the, on, on the Southeast Seminole defense. But what you did, you jumped in there and you had a couple of blocked punts, at least partially blocked enough to uh, totally disrupt the Bayshore Bruins uh, scheme tonight. Got to feel good about, uh, got to feel good about your play tonight and you got to feel good about the Southeast Seminoles. Well, I think it was a total, it was a great defensive effort from everybody, from the first man to the last man on the bench. Even though we gave up six points and we didn't get the shutout that we won, we played the game. We played a great game coming off off week because most teams on off week play a little lackadaisical. But we came out with fire in our eyes, like Coach Mick said, when we can run down and shoot, ready to take it to him at a snap of the ball. I watched you. I keyed on you tonight. I was trying to figure out how it was that you got in there to the kicker, especially on, you know, during those, uh, not only on the sacks, but during the punts. And uh, saw you come up to the line and uh, leave the line of scrimmage, and you just seemed to evade the, the whole offensive line and, and get back there. Uh, what's on your mind when you uh, line up and you know that uh, you got a chance at blocking a punt? Well, first, all this week I was watching Derek Brooks, linebacker from Florida State, which is my idol. And I study his movements and try to find how, how he reacts to the ball. And so I time I timed the ball exactly when the quarterback's going to snap the ball. And by the time he receives the ball, I'm in the back. Well, I got to tell you, you had great timing tonight. And Southeast has uh, been known for a long time for good defense. And uh, certainly this year is no exception. The offense has come together. We uh, talked about with Coach Meckley, the special teams have come together. Brett, players like you and others, uh, uh, you've made this uh, just a fantastic season. I know you're really, really happy about uh, being undefeated with a chance to go to the state championship. Well, we don't want to get a little you know, cocky because we did win the district and we did win 5A district. But we want to take it one game at a time. <laughs> we want to take it one game at a time. Each game, step forward, will take us to Daytona to the state championship. 
Well, Brett Timmons, he's our defensive player of the week. We want to present you with uh, this, this flag from DeSears, and uh, we just wish you an awful lot of luck in uh, your games that's left on the schedule, and good luck to the Southeast Seminole. Thank you. Congratulations to you. This is Charlie Wells from Old Friend and uh, sidekick up there, Jim Brockman, that's still eating on that Subway sandwich. And uh, we'll ask you to join us again next week for the Paragon Game of the Week and also for the DeSears postgame show. Until then, greetings to you.